Hi everyone, and welcome to lesson three of our 3D modeling for newbie series. In this lesson, we'll learn about the two rail sweep, probably the most important tool within the software that allows you to create components from different profile shapes. You can find this tool by clicking on the second icon of the top row in your 3D modeling tab. So let's give it a try. I've opened a new session of Aspire and I click on the icon and I go to say, select rails. And of course it gives me an error because there's nothing drawn. So I need to first create the rails, the two rails and the profile. Let's go draw some vectors. These can be any type of vector, open or closed. I'm gonna give you a few examples. I have some curved lines. and some straight lines. And now we'll create the profile. It's going to be a simple curved vector. And the process of using the tube rail sweep is simply clicking on the icon Selecting my first vector, holding my shift key down, selecting my second vector, saying yes, these are the vectors I want to use, and making sure that they're going in the same direction. You can see the little arrows, and you can see the start points or nodes at the very top of each of the vectors. I choose my profile and hit apply, and there's my shape. Of course, there are some options within this tool, but we'll get to that later. Let's create another component. Simply selecting the button and choose our next set of rails. My first rail, my second rail. Click on yes, I want to use those as the rails. Again, you can see where the starting points are and the direction of those rails. And hit apply. It's just that easy. Now the vectors don't have to be parallel to each other. For example, I can click on the one arch vector, hold the shift key down, and select the straight vector. That's the vectors I would like to use for the rails and the profile. Imagine this process as if you have railroad tracks and a locomotive as the profile. One set of wheels is on one track, one set of wheels is on the other. That's the concept in your mind you should have. Because of the profile design, the component that was created wound up being below the modeling plane. As we learned in previous lessons, I can always adjust that by either raising the shape height or raising the base height. You can determine how tall in the Z you want it. You can adjust it at this point, as we said, with the shape height or the base height. You can adjust the component property of merge or add or subtract or merge low. But since they don't really interact with one another, the property could be set to almost anything. If I did want to set my profile to a very specific Z dimension, I can add vertical legs to the shape. That way, when I create my component, it will be exactly the dimension in the Z height that I want it to be. just say though you wind up with a situation where the end result is not as you expected. Well if you would go back and see how it was created you might find out that you had one of your vectors going in the opposite direction. For example 
I'm going to create my two rail sweep. Let's just say you don't want a dish shape or a recessed. Let's say you have some sort of odd profile. Well, all you need to do is create the vector of that profile. And like before, choose your rails. The first one you click on, hold the shift key. The second one, making sure they're going in the correct direction. Choose your profile and hit apply. Let's try it again with the vertical vectors. Choose those. The rails are running in the correct direction and hit apply. Let's just take a look at what might happen if the rails are moving in opposite directions. For example, I can right click on this first vector, change its direction. This one is going bottom up. The second rail is going top down. We hit apply after choosing our profile and our end results could be quite surprising or they may be exactly what you're looking for. If this is not what you're looking for, Simply right click on that first vector and change the direction to run it the way you want it to be. In a lot of the designs I get to do, I need to have some sort of leaf. And many badges have a sort of laurel leaf that's on the edge of the badge. I'll show you a quick way of making some leaves. I create an arc to the size and shape that I want. I then flip it around the center. I can join them, so I have now a closed vector, and as we learned before, I can create a dish shape from my create shape icon. We learned this in lesson one, and that's sort of like the leaf shape that I want. I can adjust the height of the profile in this case, the depth of the dish. You see the white spot in the center of the dish is below the modeling plane, so you may need to adjust it. And when you have it where you want to, click Apply. It's okay, but it's not what I want. I want some sort of vein of the leaf down the center. Well, here's another way of doing it. I'm gonna cut apart this closed vector so I have both a left and a right arc. I'm going to create a new vector, a slight arc downward. I'm going to put a little circle in the center. And I'm going to do some trimming. And this will be my profile shape that I want to use for this new leaf. I use the scissors tool and I clip away the vectors that I don't want making sure the rejoin vectors option is selected. So I have my two rails. I'm going to select the icon for two rail sweep. Those are the rails running in the same direction. I choose my profile. I'm going to make sure that the combined mode is set to merge. There's my leaf component. Looks a little bit more of what I was looking for. I'm going to move this to a new level. That way I can keep them all organized. I'm going to rescale it down to the size that I've predetermined. I can drag it manually or I can actually input the numbers that I want. apply and we'll close that out. Now we're going to zoom in a little bit closer so we can make some adjustments to it. I'm going to raise the base height so that it is above the modeling plane. 
It might be a little bit too thick. This is where you get to play designer and artist and creative person. You decide what you want. You decide what looks best. I'm also going to tilt it ever so slightly from bottom to top. So I want the top to be slightly higher than the bottom edge of the leaf. I'm going to bake it. That means all of the properties that you've attributed to that component are now permanently added to that. The shape height, the base height. Of course, you can always go back and change it if you want. It's a little too wide, so I'm going to manually move it in. And I'm going to rotate it to the left slightly. I want to make a mirror copy of this, make a duplicate copy around the center line. There's my second copy. But as you can see, the height of the second leaf protrudes through the first one. Not very natural looking. So we're going to need to adjust this component, which we've learned how to do in the previous lessons. We can reduce its base height, might be a little bit too severe. I want to bring it above the modeling plane. And I want to bring it as close to the top edge of the first leaf as possible. I keep getting that second leaf coming through the first leaf. So I can add a fade. I fade the second leaf underneath the first leaf. It's a little trick in 3D modeling that allows you to create interesting effects. Once I have the two components the way that I want them, I'm going to make a 3D component from this visible model. So now I have one solid model to work with, not two independent leaves. I take that component and I'm going to rotate it by hitting the zero key twice. I'm going to make sure that this component is set to merge because now I want to choose the option of to copy along a vector. So I select my object, I click on my vector that I want to, and I set the number of copies I want to make, in this case four. I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom vector. I'm going to choose six items I want to follow along that vector. How they're positioned along that vector or in which direction they go is depending upon where that first starting node is. The top arc, the starting node, was at the bottom of the vector. I'm going to make a visible copy. I'm going to make a 3D copy of the visible models, again, just like I did before. So I'm only dealing with one solid component, not multiples. And I'm going to mirror this to the right-hand side, making a copy as I do. I'm going to show you what the end result is. I found a picture of a badge that I wanted to I wanted to duplicate. And you could see the leaves along the edge of the badge are very close to the leaves that I just created. So now you can create your own badges, at least you can start to make your own badges, and this is how the leaves would be accomplished. Let me show you some of the things to be careful of, the distortion that may occur in your two rail sweeps. I have just two rectangles and a profile. I'm going to choose my rectangles. I'm going to choose the two rail sweep. I'm going to make sure that the starting points are both opposite each other at the bottom left hand corner. I'm going to choose my profile and I'm going to apply it to that corner. You could see that the rails are running in the right direction, but you might notice that there are some very slight gray lines set to angles. I have the scale cross sections with width chosen, as well as the sweep between spans option chosen. I'm going to hit apply, and this is the end result. Well, immediately we can see it's not what I was expecting. The corners are deformed, and if you also notice, the corners are at a higher Z than this middle of the span. Let's do a couple things to eliminate this. First thing is let's take care of the corners. 
we need to place our profile directly in each corner. I click on each corner and you can see I need to adjust the node of the profile so that they match up opposite one another. Don't forget, it's like that locomotive on tracks. One wheel can't get to another spot before the other side does. If I hit apply, it corrected the corner distortion. But now I still have the problem of the corners being higher in the Z than the midspan. And that's simply because I scaled across the width. The width of the corner is larger than the midpoint of the spans. I also want to uncheck the scale between widths, hit apply, and you can see how the corners have flattened down. Now it's a consistent Z height. There's also one other option that I can choose, and that would be to fill the center of the closed vector with a solid plane. And it's a quick way of being able to create some plaques that you can then add additional 3D components to. So you can see where this two rail sweep has great potential, but also you know now how to correct things if they get out of hand. Let's try this one more time. I have two vectors and a profile. Here's something to also know. The number of nodes in your rails will dramatically affect your output. You can see the inner vectors have a minimal amount of nodes, while the outer vector has multiple nodes to be able to create the curves. I suggest you eliminate as many nodes as possible and still have the desired vector that you want. You can choose the fit vectors to curves option to reduce the number of nodes. Now, here's where the problem occurs. You can see if I click on my profile to apply it to the rails that I've chosen, even though the rails are going in the same direction, their start points are not opposite one another. You can see the gray lines are going to cause a dramatically different component than what I would be expecting. So I'm not even gonna try it because I can see the start points are incorrect. I can try to click on that corner again to apply my profile there, but it will only result in another rail being added to the existing component. This is not what I want to happen. So how can I apply a starting point to the outer vector at that bottom left-hand corner? Rather easy. You can simply right click on that corner and add a start point. Now we can apply our profiles as we need. And as we did previously, knowing that sometimes corners cause a bit of distortion, I'm going to apply that profile to a couple of the corners, adjusting the nodes of the profile as needed. So they line up across from one another. And let's hit apply and see what happens. Well, you can see that some of the corners look pretty nice, but in this top right-hand one, because my node is slightly off, there's a little bit of distortion. And you can definitely see that on the left-hand top side, the corners are definitely distorted. Best thing you can do is like what we've done before, apply that profile to each of those corners. So you can ensure that you will have nice, sharp, clean corners. And hit apply. It corrected all of those distortions. I can also choose to fill in the center area. So we've created a nice plaque from our profile shape that we wanted. It's now ready for some additional items or for simple V-carving. But now you have custom stuff. I hope this introduction to the two rail sweep gave you some insight into what can be done, into some of the possibilities. In our next lesson, we're gonna look even further at the powerful tool of the two rail sweep and how you can apply it to real world situations. If you'd like to learn more about the software, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell to be reminded of our new videos. And of course, as always, if you need help, send me an email, mm at mazalik.com. I'll be glad to help. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Enjoy.